This uh, picture here very much summarizes all the concepts that we have discussed in the previous lecture about paging. It's, I think this is very good, a uh, very good picture because it very much shows how paging works. So here's our memory. At this point, we have these, uh, these frames in physical memory. The frames that are in blue are used. So 16 and 17 and 19 and 21 are used. And the ones in gray are free. So the free ones are 13, 14, 15, 18, and uh, 20. And we have a free frame list. So we have a list of free frames. And we have this process, this new process, that, that needs four pages. So the logical address space of this process consists of four pages. And the system now needs to find four frames for this process, one, pa one frame for each page. So what the system will do is that it will just look into the free list. So for page zero, it will pick up the first frame in the free list, which happened to be frame 14. So it will just put page zero in frame 14. And in the page table, which does the mapping between pages and frames, it will say page zero is in frame 14. And for page one, we'll pick the next frame, which is frame 13. So page one is in frame 13. That's what the page table says. And frame 13 in physical memory has page one uh, of that process. And uh, same thing for pages two and three. Each one of them will be in a frame, in the next frame in the free frame list. Then after doing this, we will only have one frame left, free, which is frame 15. And we will have the page table set up with the frame for each page for that process. And that's what will things look like after the allocation. So this is how, uh, how we map pages into frames. The page table is indexed by the page number. So there is an entry for each page. I was wondering why isn't the free frame list like listed sequentially like 13, 14, 15, 18? So in this case, th this is how it's listed. But in, <coughs> uh, in, in reality, uh, when frames become free, they're not going to become free in order, right? We don't know which processes have which frames. So whenever a process terminates, it's going to release the frames that it has. And those frames that the process has are not necessarily you know, in order and are not necessarily frames one, two, and three. So we don't know which process terminates. So that's why this list will have uh, you know, frames that may not be in order and may not be adjacent. Uh, and here it's you know, whether we should uh, sort this list or not. Uh, sorting it will, uh, will take some uh, computation. But it will, uh, sorting the list will take some computation. But is there an advantage in, in sorting this list or in trying to find uh, adjacent frames for a process? So what's the advantage in, in, in having things adjacent? But there is something that makes a difference, which is caching. So the, the concept here is caching. In, in memory, there is always that concept of caching. And caching is, uh, is based on what? Why does caching work? So the concept that makes caching work is locality of refer <laughs> reference. <coughs> locality of reference. And we have, <coughs> so this is an important concept in systems. And we have two kinds of locality. What are they? So there are two different kinds of locality. 
or in your I'm sure that this is covered in the in the architecture course. Uh, so there is temporal locality. And there is spatial locality. So what's temporal locality and what's spatial locality? So what's temporal and what's spatial? So temporal locality is Temporal locality means that if a program accesses something now, a time t, then it's likely to access the same memory location at time t plus delta, where delta is a small, uh, small value. So temporal locality basically means that if a, if a program accesses something in memory, it's likely to access it again and again and again within a short period of time. Because if a program accesses something, most likely, or in many cases, it's going to do multiple things with it. It will not only do, it will not only apply one operation to it. It's likely to apply multiple operations to it. So if it accesses that now, it's likely to access it uh, multiple times in the very near future, within a small period of time. This is temporal locality. Now, what's spatial locality? I don't know if I remember correctly, but was it that if you have something near to the temporal, it will probably go to the next ones to the temporal to access the data? Okay, yes. Yeah, so so if, if a program is, is accessing something, this memory location here, then most likely the next access, the next memory access is going to be adjacent to it. So it's going to be at A plus delta where delta is a small value. So it's going to be, if, if, if the program accesses address A, then the next access is going to be to A plus delta, where delta is a small value. But this delta is, is a time delta. This is a space delta. Okay. So in temporal locality, um, uh, temporal locality is adjacency in time. And spatial locality is adjacency in space. And this is what makes, uh, uh, what makes caching work. Uh, so we would like to have, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if the program, uh, if the address space of, uh, of the program is more adjacent in space, that will help because it's, when we, when we load something from the cache, we load the whole cache line. And that cache line is not one memory location. We load uh, you know, multiple memory uh, locations. Uh, okay, so we always like the, uh, we always like the physical uh, address space of a program to be adjacent or the, uh, the, the different, memory locations for a given program to be adjacent in space. Uh, and so we will look into uh, this again in a minute when we talk about uh, when we talk about the translation look aside buffer. So now the question is where should we keep that page table? Well the page table is it's going to be accessed with every memory access. With every memory access, you will have to go to the page table to, to, to find out what the frame number, uh, the corresponding frame number for the page number that you are accessing. So if a program accesses page 3 offset 500 in page 3, then I need to know the corresponding frame number. And where is the frame number? It's, it's going to be in the page table. So I need to access that page table. So ideally, I would like to have fast access, easy and fast access to the page table, and I would like to have it on chip, like in a register, hopefully. But the page table is not going to fit on the chip. You know, the page table is going to be very big because today's 
software uh, applications are huge and they use a huge amount of memory huge amounts of memory and uh, you know for example if you have if your page size is 1k that's the page size and your program uses 1 mega 1 megabytes of memory then how many pages do you need you need a thousand pages right and if your program uses a hundred megabytes then that's a hundred thousand pages so the number of pages is very large it's too large to fit uh, on chip or to be kept in uh, stored in, uh, in in registers so that's why the page table is kept in memory but now putting the page table in memory makes things much slower because with every memory access whenever you have an access now with paging a memory access consists of or an address a logical address consists of a page number and an offset or a displacement this is the page number this is the offset and we need to translate this to a frame number a physical frame number first so we need to go to the page table so this means that with every access that the program makes you have to go to memory twice once to look up the corresponding frame for this so this could be frame number you know, 705 and then we look up the frame number then once we look up the corresponding frame number we we go to that physical frame so that, that you know that what you will have you know, you'll have the page table somewhere and it's going to say this is the page table your page table so it's going to say 0 1 2 3 so 3 for 3 it's going to be 710 frame 710 so you first access the page table to to know that it's frame 710 then you have to access frame 700 so somewhere in memory there is you know frame 710 so you have to go to memory twice with every access and this is slow because main memory is two orders of magnitude slower than the processor okay now in order to solve this problem people thought of the idea of caching a subset of the page table on chip so keeping a subset of the page table on chip in uh, in what they call the translation look aside buffer so the translation look aside buffer is a cache for the page table it will have a small subset of the entries that are in the page table so if the the page table of a given program has a thousand entries in it uh, the, ta the translation look aside buffer would have only a few of them so maybe you know 32 uh, entries to one uh, one thousand entries uh, so if only a small subset of the actual page table entries will be in a in the, the translation look aside buffer. Uh, now, in the translation look aside buffer, the translation look aside buffer itself is implemented as associative memory. So it must be quick. Otherwise, that will defeat the purpose of introducing the translation look aside buffer. And each entry in the translation look aside buffer will have a key and uh, it will have a key and the, a, an actual content which is the uh, or the value uh, which is the frame number so the key or the tag is the page number and the value is the frame number so the the translation the TLB will look like this you'll have a page number and a frame number now question why don't we need to keep the page number and the page table so if you if you recall the page table entries did not have a page number we only have a frame number so the entry in the page table itself doesn't have a, a page number it only has a frame number why why is 
having a page number necessary. Yeah. The page number is just the index. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because the page table, in the page table, the page number is just the <coughs> index. So it doesn't have to be kept in the table itself. Now, why can't we do the same with the TLB? Why can't we do the same thing with the TLB? Because you're, you're changing the things you're, you're caching, and so the indexes don't match up. The indexes don't match up. Uh, match up with what? The, the index in the TLB is not going to be the, the actual page number. So you have to, you have to store the page number. So you can because, yeah, beca why? Because the TLB has only a small subset. It's only a subset, and it's always changing. Yeah. So if you have a thousand pages, and your TLB has only 10 pages or 10 entries in it. So your TLB will have, you know, page 17 and page 2 and page, page uh, you know, uh, 59 and only a subset. So that the index here has nothing to do with the page that is in there. Okay, so you have to, in the TLB, you must keep the page number because it doesn't have all the, uh, it doesn't have all the pages in it. It has only a small subset. So, so the TLB is associative memory, but you keep, you need two registers. One for the, you know, page table uh, base address, and one for the page table limit, or size, or length. Okay. So these are in register. Uh, okay. So now, with TLBs, now there are two options. You can either allow the TLB to have entries for multiple processes. And in this case, if you allow the TLB to have entries for multiple processes, you'll have to have a process ID associated with each TLB entry, a process ID or an address space ID, right? Because if the TLB has pages for multiple processes, you need a way of identifying them. You know, this page belongs to process one, and that page belongs to process two. <laughs> now, the alternative scheme is not to allow this, is to say that the page table can have, uh, sorry, the TLB can have entries for only one process at a time. Now, if you say the TLB can have entries for only one process at a time, how can you implement this, and what will be the price that we'll have to pay for this? So how will you, how will you do this? You'll say, okay, that my TLB can have pages for only one process at a time. What does this remind you of? What is this related to? So if you want the TLB to have only pages for only one process at a time, then when you context switch, when you do context switching, you have to flush the TLB. Right? Whenever you do context switch, the switching, you will have to flush the TLB. And that's the price that you, you pay. Because when you switch to a new process, now the entries in the TLB that belong to the previous process are no longer relevant, are no longer valid for this process. So you have to flush the TLB. Okay. Uh, okay. So now we look into this picture that shows how the TLBs are TLB is used with the page table. Uh, so this is the address generated by the CPU that consists of a page number and a displacement. So we first go to the TLB. Uh, this is the TLB. We first go to the TLB and look up this page number in the TLB. Now these, the, these parallel arrows here, they express the fact that search in the TLB, which is associative memory, is not going to be sequential search. It's going to be more like parallel search, or you are searching multiple fields at the same time, simultaneously. So if there is a hit in any one of these 
entries, you're going to get it immediately. You don't have to go sequentially and search, oh, is it this? No. Is it this? No. So you don't have to do sequential search. It's very much parallel search. Well, it's hardware. Uh, so if you find page P here, then you will get the corresponding frame number, and you will add that frame number to the displacement, and, that, and then you will form the physical address. That's if you hit in the TLB. If you miss in the TLB, then you'll have to go to the page table in memory, and you'll get that translation. But then you'll have to load that entry into the TLB. Right? So with caching, when you access something and you, find, you don't find it in the cache, you need to load it in the cache for future reference. So because you, you are likely to need it in the near future. So you load it into the TLB. Okay. So this is how we use the, the TLB. Questions on this? Okay, so the last concept is how we calculate the effective access time with TLB. So the effective access time when you have a TLB is basically the weighted sum. The weighted sum of the access time when there is a TLB hit and the access time when there is a TLB miss. And the weight here is going to be the hit ratio. The weight is the hit ratio. Now the access time when there is a TLB hit is memory access time, so this capital M stands for memory access time, plus the TLB access time. So when there is a TLB hit, you access the TLB once, then you access memory once. If there is a TLB miss, you will access the TLB first, then you don't find it in the TLB, and then you will end up doing two memory accesses. One is accessing the page table, and the other one is accessing the actual memory location that the program is trying to access. So basically with a hit, there is one memory access plus TLB access. With a miss, there are two memory accesses plus TLB access. So let's look, for, uh, let's look into this numerical example. Assuming a hit ratio of 80, then uh, and assuming that the TLB access time is 2 nanoseconds. So 2 nanoseconds is like a few cycles, a few processor cycles. While the memory access time is 100 nanoseconds, and like I said, memory access time is hundreds of cycles. So here, you know, a few cycles versus hundreds of cycles, so two orders of magnitude different. And that's why in, the, in these calculations here, we just ignore, we ignore the, or we neglect the TLB access time because it's two <coughs> orders of magnitude smaller than the memory access time. So our access time is 0.8 multiplied by one memory access plus 0.2 multiplied by two memory accesses. And the effective access time or the weighted sum is 120, which is, of course, closer to 100, closer to one memory access, because in most cases we hit in the TLB. And this is a more realistic now, a more realistic example is with a hit ratio of 0.99 or 99%. And in this case, you know, 99% you have one memory access. 100% uh, of the time you have two memory accesses. The effective access time is 101, which is almost the memory access time or which is almost the access time when there is a hit. Because we're assuming that, uh, you know, almost always we will hit. So this almost always we hit is something that has to do with, you know, locality of reference because of locality of reference. So, you know, think about it. Uh, if a program accesses something, it's likely to re-access that memory location in the near future. Uh, if a program accesses a memory location, it's likely to access the adjacent memory location in the, uh, the next access is likely to be to an adjacent <coughs> memory location. And something that we have to keep in mind is that 
this TLB and paging business is done at the page level. And a page will have many, uh, uh, many uh, data or code uh, items in it. So it will have, if it's, if we're talking about code, it will have many instructions in it. If we're talking about data, it will have many uh, pieces of data or numbers. For example, think about an array. You have an array, say uh, a large array, and if you have a loop, access uh, that accesses an array, a of i equals b of i plus c of i. So in these arrays here. Oh, or let's uh, well let's simplify things. Let, let's just uh, access one one array. So equals um, you know a of i plus nine. So in this case, if your page is four k, <coughs> the page is four k. Each page, and you have thirty two bit integers. Each page will have a thousand numbers in it. So when you are accessing this array sequentially in this loop, right? even if your page is not in the TLB, if the page that you are accessing is not in the TLB, uh, you will pay that price of going to memory and bringing that from the page table. But the subsequent accesses to array A are going to hit in the TLB. Because only the first one missed, and you loaded the the entry that corresponds to that page, and the page has a hundred, uh, well, a thousand, sorry. In this case, it, it will have a thousand numbers in it. So a thousand numbers in the TL, in each page. So the, the first number will, will miss in the TLB, but uh, accessing numbers one, two, three, through 999, all of these will hit in the TLB, because they are in the same page. And this caching is at the page level. Questions? Okay. So, and in fact, we will revisit these concepts when we talk about virtual memory because they're important for virtual memory to work correctly.